Okay, so I had a, another question about part B of question 5.5, .5, number one. Um, I just did a video on the first part to this question, which is very similar. So I'm going to step through this one a little bit faster. So the, the cosine function is inverse. Uh, we're going to go ahead and first just draw the cosine function out on a, an axis here. So there's my y-axis and my angle axis. Um, cosine starts at 1, goes down, hits the axis at pi over 2, comes back down here and at pi it's at negative 1, loops back up at 3 pi over 2, and then comes all the way back up at 2 pi. So this is an angle of pi, pi over 2, etc, etc. So we need to find a, 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 an interval where this is one to one. And you can pick lots of different ones, um, but there are some standard choices that are made. Um, we like to keep things centered at zero uh, as math people. You know, it doesn't make much sense to center it elsewhere. Um, zero is a nice place to start. So we, we see that from zero, starting up here, down to here, we see that there are no repeated heights. We see that this function passes the horizontal line test everywhere on this interval. If we go any further, we're going to have two spots where it hits. And that's not what we want for a one-to-one -one function. So um, we choose this interval, zero to pi, just because. There's lots of others we could choose. Um, so the second part, I'll draw again what I drew last time. Um, we've got these, these two sets of numbers. One of them's the domain. Now the domain of, an, of a cosine, again, is an angle. You know, you, you, you plug a, an angle into cosine to determine uh, what the cosine of that angle is. The range um, is just that, uh, that output, which is that ratio between negative one and one. So the cosine takes an angle, and let me, let me write it in the way they wrote it this time. Cosine takes an angle, um, y, I'll call it y, although that seems odd, and it sends it to a ratio x. So that's what cosine does. This gives cosine of y equals x. Okay. Now cosine inverse goes in the other direction. It takes some ratio and tells us what angle uh, gave us that ratio through the cosine function. So if cosine of y is uh, x, then the cosine inverse of x is y, okay? So this inverse tells us we're going the other way. This little negative one here tells us we're, we're going in the reverse direction. The, the original function cosine takes an angle, it gives us a ratio. The inverse function takes a ratio and tells us the angle. Okay, so this is all about input and output. So right here, they tell us that cosine inverse of x is y. So I've got that written here, and that means this was the original statement, I guess you could say. And here's just a couple numerical examples to, to consider that. Okay. So I'll draw my, my little circle um, and the x-axis here. Um, okay, so here we go. We've got this. We've got cosine inverse of one half. So here one half is that ratio and we remember that on the unit circle the cosine refers to the x coordinate, the ratio in the x coordinate. So we've got this one half here. 
So the x coordinate is one half. So the, the point that we're talking about on the circle is right up here. Could be there. Um, it could also be down here. Um, both of these have the x coordinate of one half. But I think in the context of this problem, we're only talking about this rate, this interval zero to pi. So the question now becomes, cosine inverse of one half is what angle? So what angle gave us this value of one half as an x coordinate? Um, well, hopefully this is one of the uh, things that you memorized already that the cosine of pi over three is one half, okay? Um, and so we see this cosine of, cosine inverse of one over two is pi over three, right? We know this relationship exists. So that should tell us right away, just based on the, the discussion we had previously over here on the upper right, that cosine of pi over three is one half. These two things just tell us the opposite sort of direction of things. This, um, this one half is a ratio. This pi over three is an angle. Well, here we switch the role of these things. Cosine inverse takes a ratio, gives us an angle. Well, that means that the cosine without the inverse takes the angle and gives us the same ratio on any interval where it is one to one. So there you have it. That's, that's why this should be pi over three and why this should be one half. Hope that helps.